In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly posed to project engineers. These questions aim to assess technical knowledge, problem-solving skills, and project management capabilities essential for the role. We will also provide detailed answers to help you prepare effectively. This resource is designed to boost your confidence and improve your chances of success in securing a project engineering position. 1. What engineering software applications are you proficient in? I am proficient in various engineering software applications that enhance design, analysis, and project management. Some of the key tools include AutoCAD for drafting and design, SOLIDWORKS for 3D modeling, and MATLAB for numerical analysis and algorithm development. I also have experience with project management software such as Microsoft Project and Trello, which help in tracking progress and managing resources effectively. Additionally, I am familiar with simulation tools like ANSYS for finite element analysis, which allows for testing and validation of designs under different conditions. 2. Can you describe your experience managing multiple projects simultaneously? Managing multiple projects simultaneously has been a significant part of my professional experience. I prioritize tasks based on deadlines and project scope, utilizing project management tools to keep everything organized. Regular communication with team members ensures everyone is aligned with project goals. I establish clear milestones and allocate resources efficiently to avoid bottlenecks. Adapting to changing circumstances is crucial, so I remain flexible and ready to adjust plans as needed. This proactive approach helps maintain momentum and meet client expectations effectively. 3. How do you ensure projects are completed on time and within budget? To ensure projects are completed on time and within budget, I focus on diligent planning and regular monitoring. Initially, I outline a detailed project timeline with clear milestones. I use project management software to track progress and identify any deviations promptly. Regular team meetings help maintain open communication, allowing for quick adjustments if resources are misallocated. I also establish a contingency budget for unforeseen expenses. By fostering a culture of accountability among team members, I ensure everyone understands their responsibilities and deadlines, which keeps the project on track. 4. What processes do you use to check for and prevent errors in your work? In my work, I implement a combination of thorough planning, regular reviews, and effective communication to check for and prevent errors. Initially, I break down tasks into manageable components and establish clear criteria for success. Throughout the project, I conduct periodic reviews and audits, ensuring that each phase aligns with the established goals. Additionally, I utilize checklists and peer reviews to catch potential issues early. Encouraging open dialogue within the team allows us to address concerns promptly and fosters a collaborative environment where everyone feels empowered to contribute to quality control. 5. How do you approach technical problem solving when faced with a challenging issue? When faced with a challenging technical problem, I begin by thoroughly understanding the issue. This involves gathering all relevant data and consulting available resources. I then break the problem down into smaller, manageable components, allowing me to identify potential causes. Next, I brainstorm possible solutions, considering both conventional methods and innovative approaches. I prioritize solutions based on feasibility and potential impact, then implement the best option. Afterward, I evaluate the effectiveness of the solution and document lessons learned for future reference. 6. How do you typically start planning a new project? When starting a new project, I begin by defining the project goals and objectives clearly. This involves gathering input from stakeholders to ensure alignment with their expectations. Next, I conduct a thorough analysis of the project requirements and constraints, including budget, timeline, and available resources. I create an initial project scope and outline key deliverables. Engaging the team early in the planning process fosters collaboration and innovation. Finally, I develop a detailed project plan, incorporating risk assessments and communication strategies to guide the team through the execution phase. 7. What methods do you use to track project progress and ensure deadlines are met? To track project progress and ensure deadlines are met, I utilize a combination of project management software and regular status meetings. Tools like Trello or Asana help visualize tasks and deadlines, allowing for real-time updates. I establish clear milestones and key performance indicators, KPIS, at the project's start to measure progress effectively. Weekly check-ins with team members promote accountability and facilitate early identification of potential delays. Additionally, I prioritize open communication, 
encouraging team members to share challenges they encounter, which helps in proactively addressing issues before they escalate. 8. How do you handle scope creep and change requests during a project? Handling scope creep and change requests requires a structured approach. First, I assess the impact of proposed changes on the project timeline, budget, and resources. I engage stakeholders in discussions to understand their needs and clarify priorities. If a change is justified, I document it through a formal change request process, ensuring all parties are informed and agree on the new scope. By maintaining clear communication and setting boundaries, I can minimize disruptions while delivering quality results. This approach helps me manage expectations and maintain project integrity. 9. Describe your experience with risk management in engineering projects. Risk management is a crucial component of engineering projects. I start by identifying potential risks during the planning phase, utilizing tools like SWOT analysis and risk matrices. Regularly, I assess these risks and prioritize them based on their impact and likelihood. During the project lifecycle, I implement mitigation strategies, such as contingency planning and regular monitoring. I ensure that all team members are aware of risks and understand their roles in managing them. This proactive approach has been instrumental in minimizing disruptions and ensuring project success. 10. How do you prioritize tasks when managing multiple projects with competing deadlines? To prioritize tasks effectively, I first assess the urgency and impact of each task within all projects. I categorize them based on deadlines, project goals, and resource availability. Utilizing project management tools helps me visualize priorities and dependencies. I also communicate regularly with team members to understand their workloads and any potential bottlenecks. This collaborative approach ensures that I allocate resources efficiently and address the most critical tasks first, allowing for flexibility when unexpected challenges arise. Being adaptable is key in managing competing demands. 11. How do you communicate highly technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders? Effective communication of technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders involves simplifying complex ideas without diluting their essence. I focus on using analogies and relatable examples that resonate with the audience's experience. Visual aids, such as charts or diagrams, can be invaluable for illustrating intricate data. Listening actively to stakeholders' questions helps tailor my explanations to their specific concerns. I strive to create an open dialogue, encouraging feedback and questions, which fosters understanding and builds trust between technical teams and stakeholders. 12. Describe a time when you had to deal with a difficult client or team member. How did you handle it? In a previous project, I encountered a client who was consistently dissatisfied with our progress. I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one meeting to understand their concerns better. During our discussion, I actively listened and acknowledged their frustrations. I made it clear that their input was valuable and proposed a revised timeline with specific milestones. By maintaining open communication and demonstrating commitment to their needs, I was able to rebuild trust. This approach led to a more collaborative relationship, ultimately enhancing project outcomes and client satisfaction. 13. How do you ensure effective communication among cross-functional teams? Effective communication among cross-functional teams requires establishing clear channels and protocols for information sharing. I prioritize regular meetings to foster open dialogue, ensuring every team member can voice their ideas and concerns. I also utilize collaborative tools like project management software and messaging platforms to keep everyone updated in real time. By setting clear expectations and encouraging a culture of transparency, I facilitate a collaborative environment where all team members feel valued, which ultimately enhances project outcomes and strengthens team dynamics. 14. What strategies do you use to motivate and lead project teams? To motivate and lead project teams, I focus on clear communication, establishing shared goals, and fostering a collaborative environment. I encourage team members to voice their ideas and concerns, ensuring everyone feels valued and heard. Recognizing individual contributions is crucial. I celebrate milestones and achievements, which boosts morale. Additionally, I provide opportunities for professional development, empowering team members to enhance their skills. Regular check-ins help identify challenges early allowing us to adjust our approach and maintain momentum. By creating a supportive atmosphere, I inspire teams to perform at their best. 15. How do you handle conflicts or disagreements within your project team? When conflicts arise within my project team, I prioritize open communication and active listening. I encourage team members to express their perspectives in a safe environment. 
By facilitating a discussion, I help identify the root cause of the disagreement. I guide the team toward finding common ground, emphasizing collaborative problem solving. When necessary, I mediate the conversation to ensure all voices are heard. This approach fosters a sense of trust and respect, enabling the team to move forward effectively while maintaining a positive working relationship. 16. Tell me about a time when a project didn't go as planned. How did you address the situation? In one project, we faced significant delays due to unforeseen supply chain issues. Recognizing the potential impact on our timeline, I organized an immediate team meeting to reassess our priorities and explore alternative suppliers. We adjusted the project schedule by reallocating resources and identifying non-critical tasks that could be postponed. I maintained open communication with stakeholders, providing regular updates on our progress and any changes. This proactive approach allowed us to minimize delays and ultimately deliver a successful project, albeit later than originally planned. 17. How do you make decisions when faced with incomplete information? When faced with incomplete information, I rely on a structured decision-making process. First, I gather as much relevant data as possible, consulting with team members and stakeholders to gain diverse perspectives. I then identify the key factors that impact the decision and weigh the potential risks and benefits. In cases of uncertainty, I prioritize flexibility and adaptability, allowing me to pivot as new information becomes available. I also use scenario planning to envision possible outcomes, which helps guide my decision. This approach enables me to make informed choices, even with limited data. 18. Describe a situation where you implemented a process improvement that led to cost savings. In my previous role, I noticed a significant amount of time was being wasted during the design approval phase due to redundant review cycles. I proposed a streamlined review process that involved cross-functional team meetings, where all stakeholders could provide feedback in a single session. This change reduced the review time by 30%, allowing projects to move forward more quickly. As a result, we not only saved man hours but also decreased project delivery times, which led to improved client satisfaction and reduced operational costs across multiple projects. 19. How do you balance quality, cost, and time constraints in your projects? Balancing quality, cost, and time constraints requires a structured approach. First, I establish clear project goals and objectives, ensuring all stakeholders are aligned. I prioritize tasks based on their impact on quality and deadlines, using tools like Gantt charts for visibility. Regular communication with the team helps identify potential issues early, allowing for adjustments without significant cost implications. I also advocate for iterative testing and feedback to uphold quality while staying within budget and timelines, ensuring that each phase meets defined standards. 20. What approach do you take when evaluating new technologies or methodologies for potential use in projects? When evaluating new technologies or methodologies for projects, I first conduct thorough research to understand their capabilities and limitations. I engage with industry experts and review case studies to gauge real-world applications. A pilot test or prototype is often implemented to assess compatibility with existing systems and processes. Stakeholder feedback is crucial so I ensure team members are involved in the evaluation process. Finally, I analyze cost-effectiveness and potential ROI to make informed decisions that align with project goals and organizational values. 21. How do you ensure compliance with safety regulations and standards in your projects? Ensuring compliance with safety regulations and standards involves a systematic approach. First, I conduct a thorough review of all applicable regulations during the planning phase. This includes consulting relevant codes and guidelines specific to the industry. I integrate safety considerations into the project design and execution phases by conducting risk assessments and safety audits. Regular training sessions for the team on safety protocols and best practices are essential. Additionally, I maintain open communication with safety officers and regulatory bodies to address any concerns promptly. This proactive approach helps in minimizing risks and ensuring compliance throughout the project lifecycle. 22. Describe your experience with environmental impact assessments in engineering projects. In my previous role, I was involved in several environmental impact assessments, EIAS, for infrastructure projects. This included conducting baseline studies to evaluate existing environmental conditions and engaging stakeholders to gather input. I collaborated with multidisciplinary teams to identify potential environmental impacts and develop mitigation strategies. I ensured compliance with local regulations and guidelines, 
which required thorough documentation and reporting. By prioritizing sustainable practices, I helped minimize adverse effects on ecosystems while ensuring project feasibility and community acceptance. 23. How do you stay updated on industry regulations and best practices? To stay updated on industry regulations and best practices, I regularly engage with professional organizations and attend relevant workshops and conferences. Subscribing to industry journals and online publications helps me keep abreast of changes and advancements. I also participate in networking events, which provide insights from peers and leaders in the field. Engaging in continuous learning through online courses allows me to explore new methodologies and technologies. Additionally, I follow key influencers and thought leaders on social media to gain diverse perspectives on emerging trends. 24. Where do you see yourself professionally in five years? In five years, I envision myself taking on a leadership role within my field, possibly as a project manager or team leader. I aim to further develop my technical skills while also enhancing my ability to mentor junior engineers. My goal is to lead innovative projects that make a significant impact on our industry, especially focusing on sustainable engineering practices. I hope to work on cross-functional teams, pushing boundaries in technology and design. Continuous learning will be key, and I plan to pursue certifications and attend industry conferences to stay at the forefront of advancements. 25. How do you stay current with emerging trends and technologies in engineering? To stay current with emerging trends and technologies in engineering, I regularly engage with industry publications, attend webinars, and participate in professional organizations. Networking with peers and attending conferences provide insights into innovative practices. I also take online courses to enhance my skills and knowledge of new tools. Engaging in discussions on platforms like LinkedIn helps me understand diverse perspectives. This continuous learning approach allows me to adapt and incorporate relevant advancements into my work, ensuring I remain competitive and effective in my projects. In this video, we've explored the top 25 project engineer interview questions and answers that will help you prepare effectively for your upcoming interviews. By understanding these key concepts and practicing your responses, you can confidently showcase your skills and experience to potential employers. Remember, Preparation is key to making a strong impression and increasing your chances of landing that dream job. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content. Good luck with your interviews.